Hey everyone, welcome to a short video series on the first person body and body awareness features that were recently added to Neo FPS. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at the legs and torso character. So, this is a character that has the arms built into the weapon, uh, and then the legs and the body itself are on the character. So, what this means is that you get your traditional weapon framing within the camera viewport. But you can still look down and see your own body, see your legs as you move. So yeah, dead simple in that sense. Let's just uh, have a quick look at how it's set up. Okay, so here we have the um, no arms character template. Uh, so this is, I'm using the template because the kobold one is a variant prefab, which is a bit harder to, to pick our way through. So this is very similar to a uh, regular non-body character. Uh, the only real difference being that we need to use uh, a Yaw transform, even if we're not using the steering system, because we want to parent to that the actual character model. Whilst well, having a separate Yaw and kind of aim Yaw transform does allow you to do the steering where you where you uh, detach the character rotation from the body rotation and then rot uh, turn towards it over time to add inertia and things like that. Um, we use that on the demo facility character, so it's not just for these uh, first person body characters. The reason that we need it in this situation is because of the separate time steps that uh, Unity works with. So physics, like the character movement, is done at a fixed time step, uh, default being 50 frames per second. Uh, whereas the rendering is done variable as fast as your computer can update and render its screen uh, that's what you're going to get so we update the position and the rotation of the root of the character in the physics time step and then interpolate in the render but the rotation of the aim we want that to be completely responsive uh, based on your render frame rate so we want that to be instantaneous so we we drive that through the your transform here now, if we didn't have that because we weren't using steering and we just parented the character model to the root, then it's going to rotate separately to the camera and you're going to get this jitter. Um, so even though you're saying rotate at the same time or update at the same time, uh, because your steering is set to one and it's essentially connected, you will say turn left and the character body will kind of like jitter left as it's doing it. And it just looks horrible. Uh, so we need this separate yaw here. All right, and then we have the demo character body here. So this is like with a full body, we have all these different meshes in this demo one here. Uh, so for example, the third person is the everything. The first person head is a shadow caster, which you can't actually see, but which casts a shadow on the ground. Uh, there's the full uh, character first person. So that's missing a head, but it has the arms built in. In this case, we're using the body and legs together but we're using the arms built into the weapons themselves. And then we have a separate set of arms for different situations. Alongside the meshes, we also have the skeleton. So this is the different bones and things like that. And then on each of these, I have added damage colliders for the different shapes. So for example, stomach damage collider there. So this is an object on the character physics layer. It's got a capsule collider or another type of collider. I think the, the feet use boxes, for example. It has a basic damage handler, which passes damage uh, that's inflicted to this collider up to the health manager on the root of the character. Uh, simple surface, flesh. So that means you'll get the uh, fleshy hit effects when you shoot it. And then an impact handler, which passes forces up to uh, the Neo character controller on the root. So let's take a look at the components on the route and see what differences there might be. So here we have the motion controller. And as we looked at before, we have this section for animation. So we have the body animator, which is on this model that we added in. We have the upper body root. So this is what we're using for the aim yaw. And this is essentially the root of all of the upper body systems. So the camera, the wieldable items like the weapons and things like that. Uh, the different spring effects uh, and so on and so forth. So this object here, if we have a target set, will be updated each frame to match its position to that object. 
doesn't match rotation, it's purely position. We want the rotation to be driven by the aiming and the input, uh, but it matches the position each frame to here. So in the full body character, this was actually matched to a proxy on the torso of the character. So this was where the weapon would be placed. And then we used camera constraints to constrain the camera position to the head. Now, because the weapons are fixed to the camera in this body, we don't need to do that. We can just use the upper body target as the camera proxy here, which is this object under the head bone. So position like that. Yep, Z facing forwards, so on and so forth. And then yeah, each frame, this uh, upper body root will match that position. Character height, this is an animator height anim float parameter on the animator controller of the character. As you set the target height of the character on the motion graph, uh, the motion controller will blend from uh, a one times height to 0.65 times height in this character's case. And that value will be sent to the animator. That can be used in the blend trees for the animator to blend between the crouching animations, the walking animations, the sprinting, and so forth. Uh, currently this has an error because the animator component here doesn't have a controller assigned. If it did, uh, for example, if we do this template animator here, oop, then that error disappeared. And yeah, this one, there they go. That error has now disappeared. Now, the other thing here is this uh, yaw and aim yaw, just as with the full body, this enables us to use the steering. Uh, like I said, you don't need to use this in this uh, legs and torso character. Um, this is to give inertia and to give a bit of extra physicality, uh, which is entirely optional. Uh, in the full body character, it feels much better to have this, but here it doesn't really matter. And yeah, and then on the root of the character, uh, the rest of this component and all of the other components, uh, your normal settings, the settings that are in the non-body demo characters or that you might get from the output of the character creation wizard, uh, they're all fine. You don't need to change anything else. So it is purely uh, this little section here on the motion controller. In the full body character, we had an extra transform in between this body spring and the player camera root, which is where we had the camera constraints. Uh, like I said, because we're matching this upper body root to the camera proxy, we don't need to do this here. So this is much simplified. This also means that the weapons uh, that we use don't need to use the camera constraints aimer. They can use the same aimers as they always did uh, pre first person body. If we have a look at the character model itself and look at the components on here then. So we have the first person body here. So this handles the foot IK. So as you walk over steps, you walk up and down slopes and things like that. This will match your feet to the ground. Um, if you're on a slope, then to prevent it from overextending your back leg, uh, the, the leg that's furthest down the slope, then the whole body will be lowered slightly. But essentially, otherwise, all it does is position the feet uh, based on the ground. The aim, pitch, and yaw here, these are animator controller parameters, uh, float parameters, that can be set uh, with your aim, pitch, and your aim, yaw to allow you to do additive animation layers or to do uh, blending, things like that. If you wanted to move the character uh, body based on your aiming. Uh, but in this case, I actually use a procedural system here. So this is the procedural spine aim matcher. So we went through this in the full body as well. This is uh, the yaw and the aim here uh, gets a difference. So this is the body yaw, the body heading, and then the actual uh, camera direction essentially. And this allows us to get the difference between the two and then apply that to the different bones of the spine based on different multipliers. And it also adds in leaning here. So we can say lean left and right. These are the different lean amounts. Take that rotation and based on these multipliers, apply that up to the different bones of the spine and apply a counter rotation to the head and the neck as well. Like I say, you could do these through the animation controller. But I find it much more consistent and much smoother to use this here. Uh, and it makes your animator controllers much, much simpler as well. Uh, first person body root motion is what captures the root motion sent from the animator here. You can see handled by script. 
And next to this, apply root motion setting. Uh, so this captures the root motion, sends it to the motion controller, and then the motion controller can choose whether or not to use that in their motion graph states, can add multipliers and damping and all kinds of things like that just to make it much more powerful. And then finally, we just have this def animation here. So this just ties into the health manager on the character. And when the uh, death or on alive changed event fires, this just uh, sets this parameter on the animated controller here. So the character can just drop dead. And yeah, that is essentially it for the torso and legs or no arms character template. Uh, in the demo, we were just using the demo facility weapons as default. Literally no other changes, just this character prefab and the weapons and everything like that just worked fine. I hope that was useful. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the split rig. Now, they don't actually have a demo for that, so we're going to be using the HQ FPS asset to show that one. So yeah, I'll see you all in the next video.